Dr. Peters is a regular doctor sometime in the future. I have to leave for work now, Doc. I have an interesting day ahead of me. I'm meeting many of my patients to discuss their treatment plan using stem cells. Sounds interesting, Doc. Hey, remember to bring back a bone, please. Sure thing, Doc. Have a nice day and be a good boy. Stem cells? Hmm, what is actually a stem cell? I have to look it up. Hmm, I don't even know what the cell is. I'll start with that. The cell is the basic biological unit that carries out the necessary functions for life. All organisms are composed of cells. Some organisms, for example bacteria, consist only of a single cell which makes them unicellular organisms. Other organisms have more than one cell and are called multicellular, like humans who have around 100 trillion cells in their body. The human body consists of many different cell types, like blood cells, muscle cells, nerve cells and many others. Each cell type has its own special function. Blood cells carry oxygen around the body and muscle cells are responsible for the muscle contractions when your body performs work. The different specialized cells in our bodies constitute our tissue and organs like muscles, skin, brain and heart. Cells also contain DNA, the hereditary information which is the genetic code used to develop and keep living organisms functioning. It is like a cell's recipe for how to maintain their work and growth. Cells are either prokaryotic or eukaryotic. The bacteria are prokaryotic and have no cell nucleus, while eukaryotic cells have a nucleus. The eukaryotic cells are more complex and are found in animals, plants and fungi. This is an eukaryotic cell. The typical size of these cells varies from 10 to 100 micrometers. The outer layer of the cell is the plasma membrane and it defines the cell's boundary. It provides for protection and regulates the transport of solutes in and out of the cell via proteins located in the cell membrane. The DNA is folded as chromosomes which is located in the cell nucleus. The cell contains many different organelles that are like the cell's organs. Okay, let's see what the stem cell is then. A stem cell is a cell which is the origin to all of our specialized cells in our body. Nerve, muscle and skin cells all come from a stem cell and are formed through a process called differentiation. A stem cell has two important functions that distinguish it from a normal cell, which is proliferation and differentiation. The first function is proliferation. This means that the stem cell has the ability to renew themselves for a long period through cell division in an undifferentiated state. The second function is differentiation. This means that the stem cell can differentiate into a specialized cell like a muscle cell or a nerve cell. Stem cells divide either by symmetric division, where they duplicate the number of stem cells, or by asymmetric division, where one normal stem cell and one differentiated stem cell is produced. Stem cells keep amplifying themselves by self-renewal to expand their number during development, or to maintain their number in the body after cell injury. A stem cell can be either totipotent, pluripotent, multipotent or unipotent. A totipotent stem cell is a cell that on all stages of development can differentiate into all kinds of cells, even into the cells that form the placenta and the umbilical cord. In mammals, the cells right after fertilization are totipotent, and later on they differentiate into pluripotent stem cells, also called embryonic stem cells. Pluripotent stem cells can differentiate into almost all types of cells that exist in the body, like muscle, nerve or skin cells. The only exceptions are the cells that form the umbilical cord and the placenta. Multipotent stem cells are a bit like pluripotent stem cells, but they are more restricted concerning the category of cells they can differentiate into. 
For example, one type of multipotent stem cells can divide into all the different types of blood cells, but not into muscle cells. Another type of multipotent stem cells are responsible for the different types of muscle cells. Unipotent stem cells can only differentiate into their own types of cells. This means that they can only produce one type of cells. There are three main categories of stem cells according to where they come from. First, there are embryonic stem cells. These are the cells that, with time, develop into a human being. The second group consists of adult stem cells, which replenish worn-out specialized cells. The third group of stem cells is induced pluripotent stem cells. They are genetically reproduced pluripotent stem cells from multipotent or unipotent adult stem cells. During fertilization, a sperm cell enters the egg cell and a zygote consisting of totipotent stem cells is formed. The zygote starts to divide and produce many cells. Around the fifth day after fertilization, the zygote has developed into a blastocyte. Under normal circumstances, the blastocyte will develop into a fetus in the mother's womb. The inner cell mass in the blastocyte contains the embryonic stem cells. They can be extracted and used for therapy or research. This will hinder the fetus development. The challenges with embryonic stem cells are that they are known to form tumors and also cause immune rejection when transplanted for use in therapy. The source of embryonic stem cells has given rise to many ethical issues and discussions. Using fertilized eggs are much discussed because of their potential to develop into a complete human being. The adult stem cells reside in their corresponding tissue and are either multipotent or unipotent cells which can differentiate into the specialized tissue cells when needed. Adult stem cells function as a reservoir to replenish dead or injured tissue cells that lack the ability to renew themselves. The adult stem cells can be extracted from the corresponding tissue and used in therapy or research. The problem with adult stem cells when using them in therapy is to produce enough cells. The amount of adult stem cell in tissue is very low and they have limited ability to divide. Induced pluripotent stem cells are produced by introducing genetic elements encoding proteins into different types of cells, in example, muscle stem cells. This is called reprogramming of adult cells into pluripotent stem cells. Induced pluripotent stem cells eliminates the ethical issues connected to using embryonic stem cells. Using induced pluripotent stem cells means that you are using the patient's own cells and the problems of immune rejection are therefore also avoided. The biggest challenge when using induced pluripotent stem cell is the lack of precise methods to make them differentiate into the desired specialized cells efficiently. The differentiation can be controlled and regulated by certain factors. By changing the composition of the culture medium which the cells are growing in, by altering the surface of which the cells are growing on. This surface is called a scaffold. The important factors are the dimension and the biomaterial used in this scaffold. By insertion of specific genes in cells, you can control their fate. And external signals like growth factors secreted by nearby cells can affect the differentiation. Oh, this is interesting. But what about the ethical issues of using stem cells? I have to discuss this with Doc when it comes home.